Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for logging in for this lunchtime learning session. So uh, my name is Shane O'Reilly, and I am going to speak to you a little bit about flow tube fishing today and why I think it's a particularly effective method of fishing in an Irish context. Um, a little bit about myself. I work as an angling advisor for Inland Fisheries Ireland. Uh, that means mainly what I do is I work to promote angling and to give information about angling out to people who want to come to Ireland fishing and um, I've been fishing for most of my life and I have been flow tube fishing for around 15 years or so and um, I mainly do it for pike fishing but there's no reason why you can't do it for other types of fishing such as trout fishing or, or, or perch fishing for instance predator type of fishing so um, I'm going to speak a little bit I don't know most of you will probably know a bit about flow tube fishing, some of you won't. So I'm gonna go through some of the basics to start off with. So what is a flow tube? So there's a picture of one there, basically a flow tube. It's essentially an inflatable floating fishing armchair. So a flow tube normally has two large bladders that are inflated with air and a couple of smaller ones in the seat that are also inflated with air. And you basically sit in it and you use fins to power yourself around. So sitting in there, feet hanging out the front of it and using fins to kick yourself backwards. It's um, a very popular means of fishing on the continent and in the USA. Uh, it hasn't been so popular in Ireland up until the last few years. When I first bought a flow tube, you couldn't actually buy one in an Irish tackle shop. You had to get one online, but now they're much more available. You can get them in most tackle shops and you see more people doing it as well around the country. So what's the basic equipment that you need to go flow tube fishing? Well, apart from the tube, you need very little. Um, you need to buy a set of fins, which is, as I said, you use to propel yourself around. You don't need expensive ones. I use a set of fins that I got in Lidl. Um, for about 30 euros and they do just fine. Um, you need chest waders because you're actually sitting up to your waist in water. So um, you need chest waders to make sure you don't get wet, obviously. Uh, in the winter time, if you're gonna do it in winter, which I do, you're gonna need neoprene chest waders because it's, it's no fun being in a, a nice cold uh, lake uh, in, in breathable chest waders in winter. You're gonna need a, a pump. Um, and this pump here is just a, a, a two-way pump system. Uh, you can use this one, which is a manual one, or you can buy one that also fits into your, um, your car lighter. So it's a, it's a mechanical one. And the final piece of kit you're gonna need is, uh, is a PFD or a life jacket. Now, um, anytime you go on the water in Ireland, whether it's in a boat or a float tube, you should have one of these. And it's just one extra piece of safety for you when you're on the water. And then apart from that, you're just going to need to bring your tackle. So when it comes to float, float tube fishing, really less is more when it comes to tackle. So you can only bring a certain amount of tackle with you. And that is a good thing, I think. So if you're like me, you've probably got shed loads of tackle. You've got rods, you've got lures, you've got flies, you've got just about everything. And we all have a tendency to bring all of that with us when we go fishing and it's really too much stuff. But when you're flow tube fishing, you're very, very limited as to what you can bring. And you kind of have to make decisions in advance as to what you, what you can bring. So when I go flow tube fishing, I normally only bring one rod most of the time, I'd say 95% of the time. A very rare occasion, I'll bring two rods. Um, you can also really only fit one or two small boxes of lures or flies. Um, and uh, that means you have to make choices in advance of what ones you're going to bring. So you're really talking about 10 or 12 of your favorite lures. Um, you can bring one, round about one box of terminal tackle, which are traces and leaders and lure clips, etc., etc. And that's really all that you need to get fishing in a flow tube. But one useful bonus that I've found over the years, and it wouldn't have been something that I would have used when I started off float tube fishing, but I found has become incredibly useful. There's some means of, of, of gauging the depth. So that could be a, a sonar, a type of sonar, a fish finder, or, or anything that you can use that will give you a gauge of the depth you're fishing over, because that can be extremely important, just knowing, knowing how deep you're fishing and um, when, you're, when you're fishing. 
So that's that's something that I would advise if you have a if you have a few bob to spare to get something like that, some sort of a sonar. So what are the advantages of flow tube fishing? Um, well, okay, one of the main advantages or one of the most important ones given the current climate is that they're, they're very affordable. So you will pick up a good flow tube for circa 250 euros. I was actually in Decathlon in Dublin yesterday, the big sports show, uh, show or big sports store, and they were selling them for 200 euros, very good ones for 200 euros. So it's really, a, a very affordable way to get fishing. If you compare that to the price of a boat, you're going to spend, I suppose, minimum 1,500 euros on a boat and, you know, roughly the same again on a trailer, you know, so there's barriers to entry there, whereas a flow tube can get you on the water with only 250 euros. Um, so a second big advantage is its portability, okay? So when it's deflated, it fits in a decent sized box. Um, a lot of us don't have room to store a boat, for instance, on our properties, but we all have room maybe to store a flow tube up in the attic or even in a cupboard because it, it really packs down very small when it's deflated. They're also extremely easy to transport. You can fit one, you can fit a couple of them deflated in the back of your car, in your boot, and um, you can fit two or three of them in fully inflated in a small, in a small van. So they're very easy to get around. You know, you're not talking about the hassle of trailers, et cetera, et cetera. You basically throw these into the boot of your car and away you go. Um, they're also quite easy to set up and break down. So you, 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 when, you're, when you're using a pump to inflate them, it really only takes five minutes to do that. And it takes two minutes to let the air out of them. So again, there's no faffing around with trailers and all of that, you know, slipways, that sort of thing. You're really ready to go. You can be re really ready to go 15 minutes after you arrive to the water. Um, it's also non-polluting and environmentally friendly. So you're not using two-stroke, you're not using uh, petrol, any of that sort of stuff. So in, in you know, you're, you're, you're having minimal impact on the environment when you're doing it. And another advantage is it's actually quite good for fitness. If you think about it, you're using your legs all day to kick yourself around. Um, and that can be quite good for fitness. You'd know all about it at the end of the day after a day's flow tubing. And uh, I'll speak a little bit more about that later. So I just spoke about some advantages and they're kind of in and around the affordability and the portability, but there's also fishing advantages to using a flow tube as well. Um, and I'm going to compare this mainly to, to maybe boat fishing when you're fishing. It's the other alternative to getting on the water is to having a boat or is, is having a boat. So uh, when, you're, when you compare flow tube fishing to boat fishing, flow tube fishing is a very slow way of fishing, which can be a very good thing. OK, so when you're in a boat, you're kind of drifting and you're at the mercy of the wind and you're, you're, you're clipping along at the, at the pace of the wind. Whereas when you're flow tube fishing, you can spend a lot more time exploring and staying over particular lies. So what I found, for instance, when you're pike fishing, it's not every day that the pike are throwing themselves at lures. Um, you may often have to fish a, a, a particular lie for five or ten minutes in order to maybe even tease the pike into taking your bait. Um, and flow tube fishing is particularly good for that because you can spend a lot more time in a particular area. I've often found when flow tube fishing, if there's more than, if there's two or three of us doing it, sometimes one guy, one person covers a lie and moves on. And it's often the second person that comes into the lie will catch a fish because the fish has been kind of teased. It's been, it's been aroused, I suppose, by seeing the lure of the first angler and the second angler comes in and catches the fish. So spending more time fishing a particular lie can often be a very good thing. Secondly, you're spending all your time fishing when you're flow tube fishing. So you're not faffing about with oars, you're not faffing about with engines and all of that sort of stuff. You're basically, your fly or your lure is on the water, in the water all of the time. And that means that you're fishing for longer. And the same even applies if you're moving from one side of the lake when you're flow tube fishing. You will always drag a fly or a lure out behind you so you're effectively trolling from one part of the lake to the other. So you're spending more time fishing, which is always a good thing. Another reason why there's an advantage is you can move against the wind. So I spoke about um, fishing from a boat. You're always fishing with the wind. You're on a drift. Um, but with a flow tube, you can move against the wind and that gives you a lot more scope for covering a lake. You're not confined to drifting in the same way that the wind is bringing you. Um, 
another option or another another advantage is maneuverability so there are places when you're fishing for instance a lake where you just don't want to bring a boat it might be too shallow it might be too reedy too weedy too many lilies etc and um, so a float tube gives you a lot of maneuverability and um, you can get into places shallow places that you wouldn't normally be able to fish and that widens it basically widens your fishable area when you're fishing um, and you can always also very easily if there's a, if there's a spot you want to move to and you can't get to it via the water it's very easy to just get out and walk to a spot as well so you can you can cover a little bit of ground and you can basically hop from one part of a lake to another doing um, on, on feet too and it's much easier than you can for instance take a boat out and drag it across the land all that easily um, and another advantage is you you're you're quiet so there's no engines and there's no nothing disturbing um, the area that you're fishing and you have a low profile so you're kind of your angling footprint is small there's less noise and you don't have a high profile you're not throwing shadows and stuff like that so there's less of a chance of you spooking fish so looking at it in an Irish context and why do I think flow tube fishing is particularly good for fishing in Ireland well you if you look at this map here you will see that this is the, the Shannon Urn system. Apart from a few of the larger locks here, such as Loch Urn and Loch Allen, you have absolutely hundreds of these smaller little lakes of five to 50 acres. And they're all perfect for flow tube fishing. If we zoom in again to the Clare area, this is the Clare lakes. Again, you have maybe not as many, but you have plenty of lakes. And these are all lakes that are, most of them are in the five to 50 acre. Uh, size range and they're perfect for flow tube fishing. What you find with a lot of these lakes is that there is very limited back or bank access. So if you're fishing, fishing them by bank, you can't really walk around them. There will there will often be a spot, a field or two where you may be able to fish from the bank, but you'll find that most of the lake is inaccessible to you from the bank. Um, so there is often, not always, but there is often a slipway and um, the slipway might be in poor repair, etc. A lot of the lakes just don't have slipways at all. And really you don't, you have no means of accessing them at all to fish. So a flow tube is very easy to bring to one of these lakes and you don't need to have a slipway. You don't really even need to have bank access. You can normally get into the water in the margins. And if, there's a re if it's a reed fringe lake, you can basically break through the reeds and get onto a lake. So what you're looking for are these lakes that are rarely fished. And as we all know, fishing pressure is something that none of us particularly like. We don't like having a lot of people on a, on a water with us. With a flow tube, you can really get to fish lakes that are very rarely fished. And that's, that's, that's gold for an angler. So they really give you uh, improved ability to fish areas that other people are not fishing. Oops, go on to the next slide. So I'll give you an example here of a typical sort of Irish lake setup. So this is a zoom in on some of the lakes in the Cavan Urn area. And um, it didn't really matter which lakes, but these are Killywilly Lock and Quilligan Lock. And I'm going to presume that we have a, 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 a a wind coming from the west, okay, which would be one of our predominant winds. So you'll see quickly from these lakes that there's very limited bank access. There's maybe a bit of bank access down at the bottom of Killy Willy here. There may be a bit of bank access from Quilligan Lock, but a lot of the lake is covered by forestry. So if you're fishing it from a bank, you're quite limited as to where you're going to be able to fish. Okay, so let's imagine, for instance, there's a slipway and you can access it by boat here. Okay, and I'm looking at Killy Willy Lock here. So let's say you can get out on the water. In that sort of a wind, okay, you're going to be limited to fishing drifts along this part of the lake. And in any sort of a reasonable breeze, that's only 200 metres, 250 metres. By the time you get set up on a drift in a boat, you're going to be almost halfway across the lake and you will have, you're, you're not able to fish the lake effectively. Um, in addition to that, you're not going to be able to fish the western bank effectively because as soon as you get over there, you're going to be drifting off it. You're not going to be able to fish this area effectively because even when you get the boat in here, the wind is going to be carrying you on a, on a shortened drift. So, and, and the same would apply in here. So in that sort of a wind, this lake is going to be difficult to fish effectively. But if you have a flow tube, that's not going to be a bother to you. You will be able to fish all of these nooks and crannies, all this area up to the top left is going to be able to fish. You'll be able to fish all the area to the bottom left and you'll be able to fish the western bank 
very effectively because you're not going to be, your drift isn't going to be determined by the wind. Again, if you look to the left, to the top left of it, you have a, you have a little gap in here in between the two lakes. In a boat, you may not be able to get in there because it may be, it may be too shallow, it may not be possible. But in a float tube, you'll most likely be able to get in there and fish all of this lake as well. So it opens up your areas that you're going to be able to fish. And you'll see the same in Quilligan Lock up at the top right here. Uh, again, there's a bit of bank access, but it looks like there's a slipway in the top left-hand corner. But on a boat, these drifts are going to be too short for you to be able to fish effectively. Um, and that's the drift you're going to have to do in that wind. But you're going to have to wait and move down to this part of the lake to be able to do a few effective drifts in the boat. But again, this area down the bottom is going to be, you're not going to be able to fish that effectively from a boat. But you will be very easily be able to fish those, both those lakes effectively from a float tube. And that's why I think in Ireland, when you have hundreds of these lakes, um, a float tube really provides you with an opportunity to fish them very effectively and in many times more effectively than when you're fishing from a boat. I, offer, I, I find it's a very effective way for fishing the margins as well and the way that I would normally fish would be to go on a drift. If you take this flow tube here and you're drifting uh, in a left to right direction, you spend, you know, maybe 50 or 60 feet casting in to the, to the bank. So you're casting in at the, the reed margin, at the lily margin, and we all know that pike tend to hold in those areas. And it's a very effective means for fishing uh, those margins. But then what I tend to do is at the end of maybe 50 feet, I swing the flow tube around very effectively, just turn, turn in and, and do a few kicks on the fins and paddle in towards the side. And then I fish back the way, but at a 90 degree presentation what, from what I've used already. And often you'll find that a change in presentation, the fly moving in a different way can provide a trigger for the fish to take. So it's just a different way the, 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 the fish or the, the flyer that the lure is presented in a different way and that often fish, uh, provides the fish with a trigger to take. And I think that's an extremely easy way to fish with a float tube. So I've spoken about a lot of the advantages of float tube fishing and there are plenty of them, but there are some disadvantages as well. The first of those is it takes a bit of getting used to. So when you first get into a flow tube, it's a bit of an unusual environment. It takes you a while to learn your, the way to kick yourself around the lake using fins. Um, and so I would say if, you're, if, you're, if it's something you haven't done but you're planning to do, give yourself a bit of time to get oriented in the water. You know, learn how to cast efficiently. If you're, for instance, like I do a lot of fly fishing, it's, it's, it's more difficult to fly fish because you're much closer to the water. So when you're fly fishing, your back cast tends to hit the back of the water. So you do have to learn a few new ways of fishing when you, when you get into a flow tube. Um, but it's, not, it's nothing that you wouldn't get used to after one or two sessions. Um, another difficulty is an, an inability to cover large waters. So I have been talking about its suitability for a lot of our smaller lakes. In larger waters, you're going to find that fish are often more spread out and you do spend a lot of time moving from one fish holding area to another. Now, a flow tube isn't efficient for that. As I said before, you're moving quite slowly um, and often a boat would be a better, a, a better way of fishing larger venues. You can fish smaller bays and secluded bays on large lakes with a flow tube, no problem at all. But in general, if I was fishing one of our larger lakes, like our Loch Rees or our Loch Durgs or Loch Allens, I would prefer to be in a boat. Um, and there's also some safety concerns when you're in a flow tube. Um, they're not great for high winds uh, and large waves. Um, you know, in a, in a strong wind, you are under your own, you're using your leg power to get around and a high wind can tire you out. And um, so you need to be careful. You, you need to look at the weather forecast before you're going out and just make sure that the wind doesn't get, get up too much. Again, you know, waves of, 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 of a couple of feet are going to be tricky on a flow tube. So you just want to make sure that you don't end up in exposed windward shores of lakes. If you're tiring out at the end of a day, it can be tricky, can be tiring to get back. Um, to where you want to go. Uh, 
you also have a low profile and that can be difficult in, in, in busy boating areas. And I'm thinking particularly here of, for instance, cruiser traffic. If you were in an area where there's a lot of, for instance, Shannon cruises, et cetera, you know, you have a low profile. You don't want to be putting yourself in areas where there might be a little bit of danger from, from people not paying attention to where they're going in a boat. And um, just because you're kind of small, you're small in their line of vision. So I'd avoid areas like that or anywhere where there's going to be a lot of boats speeding around and there's going to be large waves. You just want to stay out of those sort of areas. Um, again, punctures. There are things that do happen when you're in a flow tube. They've happened to me once or twice. They've happened to people that I've been flow tube fishing with. They're not a disaster, okay? When, when you get a puncture in a flow tube, like I said at the outset, you have three or four bladders. So there's redundancy there. So if one of your, if one of your bladders, for instance, gets a, gets a puncture, you're still afloat and you're able to get yourself back to shore pretty easily. I've ha it's happened a couple of times. Uh, the main way you're going to get a puncture is when you're moving your flow tube from, from your car to the, to the lake because often you might have to drag it through, for instance, brambles. Um, you may have to you know, bring it through white thorn or something like that. Or often you'll find that fields are surrounded by barbed wire and they're not going to do your flow tube any, any good if you, if you hit any of those. So just be careful when you're moving your flow tube, try and avoid getting punctures. But they're not a disaster when you're fishing. You, 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 you can often fix a puncture with a, with a puncture repair kit if it happens on the day. Uh, and one other thing I spoke about it earlier, that flow tube fishing is good for fitness, and it is, but it takes you know, a bit of fitness to be able to do it. So if you think about it, you're using muscles that you're not using in that fashion every day. So I find that you can be liable to cramp after a long day fishing. It's happened to me, I've had some pretty bad cramps when out flow tube fishing, it's particularly your hamstrings and your calf kind of will tire after a day. And um, so you need to bear that in mind. It also, it's, it's, all, it's also worse in cold weather. So you need to bear that in mind, maybe give yourself a break. Don't spend hours and hours on end flow tube fishing without a little bit of break or a stretch. Um, and you need to be aware of your own fitness. Again, you can tire quite easily after a few hours because you're using muscles that you don't normally use. So that's my kind of quick overview of float tube fishing and why I think it's good in an Irish context. It's something that I love to do and I'd urge you all to get out and give it a go. Um, as I said, it's a very cheap and affordable way to get fishing, to get onto, onto a lake. And it's also a very enjoyable way because you're kind of, you're, there's a lot of solitude, there's a lot of silence. And as I said, it's a very simple way of fishing because you don't have to bring a whole lot of tackle. It kind of scales things down. And so, yeah, I'd advise you all to maybe get out and give it a go. And I'll open it up to take a few questions there, Lorraine. OK, Shane, um, one of the questions is, um, I think you kind of touched on it. Is it suitable for inshore estuary type fishing and moving into creeks? OK, well, if you're. I'm not sure exactly what's meant by inshore estuaries, um, but if you're talking about an estuary out into the sea, okay, you need to be careful. I, they're not seagoing vessels, that's for sure. And anywhere you're, you're anywhere north to, uh, in, the, in the vicinity of a sea, you're dealing with big tides and strong rips. Now, you will not be able to paddle against a strong rip or a strong flow. So you would need to be very, very careful before going somewhere like an estuary. You need to know, uh, like there are estuaries, for instance, if you think about the Malahide estuary, okay, there's a huge area of water there and not a strong rip or not a strong tide in most of it. So places like that would be fine, but you would need to know that there's not going to be a strong current because if you get caught in a strong current, you won't be able to maneuver out of it. So. You need okay. to be um, Is there an ideal water depth for using it? No, there's no. Okay, so you don't really want to have to be fishing in an area that's too deep, for instance, you know, well, like I, I don't like, because I fly fish, I don't like fishing somewhere that's maybe over 10 metres. But if you're lure fishing, you can fish any sort of a depth, really. I, I, the, most of the lakes that I would fish in wouldn't be, wouldn't be particularly deep. They're all small and they're relatively shallow. So I would say there's no particular depth that you need, that, that you would be aiming for. I think it's suitable for nearly all depths, depending on the method that you're using. So for fly fishing, which is I do a lot of, you 
tend to want to have slightly shallower because you can't get the fly down deep. But for lure fishing, if you're losing, using a heavy lure, there's no restriction on the depth you could fish. Um, have you any recommendations for a sonar or fish founder mount for the tube? Well, I've I've basically done up my own sort of amount. So I basically got uh, a, a sort of a, a strap and just wrapped it round the large bladder and 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 looped it through. Uh, I had an old fish finder, and um, uh, you know, a not very good one. You wouldn't want to be bringing your thousand euro Lawrence uh, fish finder on it. So I have a I have an old one, but you can buy. I think you can buy now. Um, I think they're for a hundred or two hundred less, two hundred euros. Those fish finders that you can actually cast out, they're designed for casting out on a rod. And I used to use one of those. I had one of those called a hummingbird for years that I used to just trail behind the flow tube. And I, I think I used to wear a watch and it would just tell me the depth that I was at. And um, so it doesn't have to be anything expensive. It's really to find the depth rather than to find, use it as a fish finder to see where the fish are. It's just good to know what depth you're fishing on so anything that you can use to find the depth okay. and do the flippers not push the wild trout down flippers may put any fish down and um, but no more than an engine would or an oar would i would say so you're not always using the flippers when you're fishing you are often drifting along okay so depending on the 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 the, the, the speed of the wind you'll find that you're only using flippers sometimes to make, keep your orientation Okay, so the wind will be blowing you along, and if you turn to, if you start to maybe spin out of the direction you want to fish, you might do a, a slight kick on the flow tube to keep your direction going. So you're not always actually kicking in the flow tube. It kind of depends on on the wind speed, etc. And I don't find that they would put uh, that they would necessarily put the trout down any more than someone. If, if you're fishing with a ghillie in, in in a boat, they're always on the oar and they're moving the oars, and and that doesn't seem to put the fish down. A um, bit about destinations now, your top three trout destinations within two hours of Dublin. Trout destinations, okay, so I mostly do my flow tube fishing for pike, so I wouldn't have a whole heap of trout destinations within two hours of Dublin, but what I would say is, on the second map that I zoomed in on there, if you look at North Clare, there are some, or the, the Burren area of Clare, there are some beautiful lakes there um, that are that hold trout and pike and uh, perch. And I fished some of them this year. They're gin clear. They're the perfect size for flow tube fishing. Okay, they're slightly over two hours from Dublin, but they are, they will be fantastic and are fantastic lakes to fish in a flow tube and would be perfect for fishing for trout. Okay, and... There is another comment in from one of the attendees saying that um, that they're brilliant in the Donegal Lakes. So that's a yeah. bit of a plug for that. And yeah, yeah. there's another question about from someone saying, is there going to be storage for all the trout that they're going to catch? Well, you'd probably be catching catch and release, I suppose, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. And then any thoughts and recommendations regarding anchoring? Yeah, okay, so anchoring you can do, and I have done. Um, so again, what you'd want to bear in mind is that you're just not in any sort of a current or anything like that. So I don't, I, I fish on lakes, um, so there isn't generally a current, and you can anchor up no problem using a flow tube. But you can also, you know, you can also, one of the, one of the advantages of a flow tube is you don't necessarily need an anchor to stay in the same place. A flow tube, Without, if, if, if it's not too windy, you can really, without too much effort, stay, stay hovering over a particular area just by using your fins and without a whole lot of effort. So you don't necessarily need an anchor, um, but it's something that I have used.